won't you stick around? I don't want to say goodbye when the sun goes down. I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight. I don't ever want to say goodnight, won't you stick around? An hour or two will never be enough to be What's going on you guys? If you haven't been following me already, this channel focuses a lot on hot rods and one of the reasons is I'm heavily intertwined in the hot rod culture and that's because I live in a multi-generational hot rod house. Well, you don't live with us, but my dad does. <laughs> this is my grandpa. He is my dad's dad, Aaron Can. So what's your name? Uh, Alan. Alan Can. That's right. <laughs> He's the original hot rodder here. He's uh, probably one of the one of the earliest people in our family that got into hot rods. I just, believe so, except for Robert Williams. Yes. He came in later. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. So we're staying right now in front of your your first hot rod? My first hot rod. So when did you, you were saying you got it in the I late 50s? In the, well, in 1958 in May, just before I graduated high school, mm -hmm. uh, I was entwined with a bunch of guys that were called Boy Scouts. So when our leader had a project he gave up on. I went to look at his car in his garage, and it was this body sitting on the floor, of thir bent 32 frame in one corner, an old 32 Ford rear axle in that corner, a beautiful dropped axle, 32 Ford dropped axle in the front, a, a 50 Oldsmobile engine completely disassembled, and a 39 CAD side shifter transmission. Wow. For 200 bucks, <laughs> I got some gunny sacks and took it home. Wow. And then at that same time, like, were your friends kind of into it? Or, like, do they have, like, hot rods and well, stuff? Well, it's a bizarre time. In 1958, we thought hot rods were dying. And I was heavily criticized at that time because we thought no one would buy hot rods or build them anymore because in 57, Chevy came out with a fabulous small block. One of my buddies in high school had a 320, a, a, a 270 uh, horsepower, uh, three-speed Bel Air hardtop mm -hmm. with uh, th two four barrels on it. So the, the, it was obvious that these old cars were probably not going to make it anymore. But for some reason, I love this car. <laughs> and I had to make it work, and I had no what the heck how to do it. And you never sold it. I never sold Still it. Still here. <laughs> Still here. So, and then we were kind of talking about, like, you didn't want to chop it. You wanted it to be... I, wanted, I wanted it to be a sleeper. Uh, but the, I kept the 50 Olds engine, and a 50 Olds engine will not fit in this car with a hood on it. Mm -hmm. I even designed an exhaust system that had two outlets on each side, the headers. Mm -hmm. uh, and my fantasy was two Model A mufflers on one side and two stock mufflers or glass packs on the other side. And for some reason, I was gonna fool everybody with that. Crazy. And then we were kind of talking, but we'll re-talk about it again. Uh, so has it really evolved over the years or is this how it looked? Like this, when did it, when, when, were, when were you done with how it looked? The car was completed actually about 1966 Mm -hmm. right after Von Dutch striped it in, uh, at its house in Reseda. And uh, my son, your dad, uh, was there at that time, August of 1966. Wow. Uh, he was not born yet. One month later, he popped out scared the hell out of And then how did you get into contact with Von Dutch and pinstriping your car? Through cars? Robert Williams and another friend of mine. And uh, they corralled uh, uh, Von Dutch to make an appointment. And there's a quick story about that. Go he spent it. all day, and by the end of the day, as everybody knew, he drank a lot, and he was a little silly. Um, there was a mistake that was made. He, he pinstriped the, the air intake wrong, and uh, I told him to keep it that way. I wanted an additional mistake in the car. <laughs> anyway, when he was all done, uh, I said, we agreed on $60 for the whole car. Wow. Said, Dutch, you didn't sign it. He says, oh, well, that's $20 more. Between <laughs> your grandma, Myra, and myself, we had 20 bucks to our name. That was it. That was the best 20 bucks I ever spent. Where did he sign it? He signed it on the, t on the turtle deck on the back. Okay, we'll, we'll check that out later. That's pretty crazy. But you're just like, oh, I'm just going to have this guy paint my car, just pinstripe it, and we'll go for it. And well, yeah, the, the car was actually painted. The body was painted in a friend of mine's driveway in North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. As this is a uh, Duco nitrocellulose lacquer. It's an illegal, you can't use this anymore. We, we painted the car in the fresh air. We didn't even use uh, wet towel, um, sheets around it. Wow. It, it, we used about five gallons of material. Probably not car. too good to breathe in, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> and when grandma and I <clears throat> rubbed it out, our fingers bled because we used soapy water to, and, trip, uh, and thousand sandpaper. Wow. Well, it's a really cool car too, but you also have another car, right? Yes, I do. So we'll go check that out now. Please, oh please, won't you stick around? It's 
bed just a little time Don't go running around I want to keep you close, want to hold you tight I don't ever want to say goodnight But just stick around Well, if you leave, don't leave it oh so long. So this is your 1929 Ford Roadster, right? That is so correct. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this? I can talk about it for years. Okay. <laughs> this car is extremely special because it's just like the other car. Car, It's 100% Ford from the frame, the body, the radiator shell. And it's got a <clears throat> Hillbrand quick change we're in the back. The car was built in 1978 in Ohio. You know, the reason for that I fell in love with it in 2000, number one, was because my first experience in hot rodding in 1955 was in a red 29 Roadster pickup with an exposed motor with exhaust system coming out. And that car, the 29 Roadster pickup, set my heart on fire for these cars. This car matches that other one pretty darn close, except it's not a pickup. Interesting, and then you got this in early 2000s, right? Yes, early 2000s. And then you didn't really have to do much to it, this is like how it came? Been, been a lot of changes that are not, uh, this is the second engine. Um, the upholstery was, was hand sewn by my friend Jeff Wasserman in his back in his garage. I paid him $1,000 for the material and I bought him a sewing machine. <laughs> The car has a real 32 Auburn dashboard. Uh, it was disassembled and reassembled a, a few times. Uh, the dashboard that holds the panel is hand-formed aluminum. The, 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 the steering column is solid stainless steel. There's a polished stainless steel plate underneath the, the uh, dashboard. The radiator is from the brass works, which is a rare item. The uh, headlights are authentic old-timey headlights. It's a real 32 frame. Uh, it's been pretty cool. As a little kid, I've been driven in both these cars growing up. Uh, one cool thing was we went out to Bonneville and took this car and we, I don't, we didn't race it, but we checked out all the cars and that was pretty cool. This is one of the memories I have, but I haven't really been driven in these cars for a while. I haven't been in this guy in like, I think four years. So uh, he's going to take him out and we'll, we'll go on a little drive. So do you want to do that now? We could do that. Just, I just need to tell you that this car is, both my cars are not trailer queens, they're driven. Uh, this car was driven to uh, Louisville, Kentucky for the National Hot Rod Association uh, oh, wow. thing. And it looks the same except it had a white uh, top on it. It got in a rainstorm, I broke a spring. Uh, it's been to Bonneville twice, it's been to Pueblo, Colorado twice, and it's been to Ventura, California once. <laughs> so it's a driver. Very cool. You got the, you know, no burnouts today, no? No burnouts no today. No 100 mile per hour pulls. <laughs> and, no. I'm a devout chicken. It's All my right. religion, chicken. That's it. All right, let's get to it. All right. I like how small these doors are. It's yeah. Hilarious. This thing seems like it drives really good. Yeah. Got a nice turning radius too. How much do you think this thing weighs? You know, I don't know. Light? <laughs> it's, it's probably, I would think maybe 20, 22, 2300 pounds. Wow. That's what I'm guessing. Gonna get pulled over fast. Nah. <laughs> He's just smiling. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. You're all uh, amped up from your uh, story you were telling us earlier. <laughs> <laughs> spotting around your neighborhood yeah <laughs> there, there is some there is some stuff yeah
crazy guy. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, the steering is a lot different. It's more of just like your, like the position of your feet. Uh -huh. It's like you're all like crunched up. It's like not as much uh, leg room, I guess you'd right. say. Yeah, the brakes work. Good. I, I'm gonna hear that. Sounds good. The noise you hear is the rear end. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's got, I was, it's I was, got square cut gears. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I've never driven a car with the open top, especially an old one. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole different experience. Oh yes, sir. You hear everything. Yeah, that's right. And you're very exposed. That's right. You hear everything. It's funny that pedal, the gas accelerator is a lot more sensitive than the brake get you in some trouble. It's pretty fun. It's pretty pretty fun. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Uh, yeah, it was just very different. You're like all crunched in there. Everything's a lot stiffer. It's it's definitely different. I've never really driven an old car with no top on either, so it's like it's interesting. You could hear everything. Wind's going past you. I see why you own this. <laughs> it's very fun. It'd be, I I probably be really fun just on the open roads in the desert, like how you've taken out by the beach and all the girls wave at you. That's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, I got a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and you too. I do too. But that's all right. <laughs> you know, just you can look. Looking is not against the law. Well, thanks for letting okay, me drive brother. the car. Thank you. And we'll see you guys in the next video.